Getting involved in advocacy usually starts with finding a cause. In my case, the cause found or rather happened to me. But it wasn't until, but it didn't become my cause until I had a problem and I had to advocate for myself to solve that problem. In 1993, I was a 20 year old student who, even though I'd been living away from home for three years, I had just gotten at my own place away from family. And I was doing finally all those grown up things like buying groceries, cooking, paying bills, but I was independent. Then, bam, diabetes came crashing into my life out of nowhere. And I say bam because it, was, it happened over a matter of four or five weeks that I went from being a healthy, carefree, young adult to now somebody who had a chronic illness for life. Nobody knows what causes diabetes and there is no cure. If undiagnosed, it's fatal. But if it's diagnosed, it's a manageable condition and you'll get what I'm uh, about to, why I say it that way later. There are many different types of diabetes, but most people are only familiar with two of them. The most common is type two diabetes, and about one in every 10 people in Ireland have it. This type of diabetes is usually managed using lifestyle changes, tablets, or insulin, or a combination of those three. I have type 1 diabetes, which affects approximately one in every 200 people in Ireland, and it's usually managed using insulin and intensive glucose monitoring. I usually try to explain what diabetes is by asking people to think about why we eat food, not what you were expecting, was it? So we eat food. We eat food to live. Food is fuel, right? And if we don't eat, we don't stay alive. Well, the food we eat is turned into glucose, and insulin turns that glucose into fuel. So your bodies, if you don't have diabetes, automatically creates insulin to turn that glucose into fuel and stay alive. Now that my body doesn't make any insulin, I have to use my brain to figure out how much of it I need to inject. And I do this using mathematical formulas to calculate how much I need. Except some of the variables in those formulas are not easy to measure. So I could, despite my best efforts, either end up either overdosing or underdosing insulin. Overdosing insulin results in low blood glucose levels, which affects my ability to function, my judgment, and in a worst case scenario, I may lose consciousness and require the help of others to recover. Underdosing insulin can result in higher than desired glucose levels, which in the long term lead, lead to my already increased risk of developing diabetes complications, such as amputation, heart attack, stroke, blindness, the list goes on, but I won't. So diabetes impacts every aspect of my life, and my daily diabetes management tasks are a never-ending cycle of ups and downs. And I'm trying to balance the insulin with the food I'm about to eat, how active or inactive I am, but also my hormone levels, stress, illness, and whatever else is going on inside our amazingly complex bodies. So diabetes management is hard, even when it's going well. So what happens when you're struggling and the supports you thought were there to help aren't? This is where advocacy comes in. Diabetes advocacy is something I fell into. I think most advocates do. And my reason for getting involved happened was because I had a me problem. I needed help with something for me. It was 2007, and I was in a place where I desperately needed help with my diabetes management. And I, wasn't, I was struggling to find that help. 
My solution to this was to find other people with diabetes and find out where they went for their care. And to find them, because this was before social media, I started a local diabetes support group. I was empowered to do this because of people who were blogging in other countries about living with diabetes and because I was in the privileged position of being able to live overseas for a couple of years and had personal experience of good healthcare and I knew it existed. My diabetes support group helped me find the clinical support I needed, but I also found something else that I really did not know I needed and this was a peer support community who have been a hugely important resource in helping me build my resilience to help me with my diabetes management. So through our support groups, we were helping individuals with their me problems one at a time. But I was beginning to realize that what we had were we problems. There were differences in the standard of diabetes care in Ireland, and these differences were a national problem. So a national solution seemed like it would make the, best, the most sense. And this was recognized by Diabetes Ireland, who launched a national diabetes advocacy strategy in 2010, and it had four phases. Phase one was a foot care campaign to reduce the number of amputations in our community. So it would benefit the entire diabetes population. It also would result in an almost immediate cost saving for the health service. It required huge grassroots community involvement and it was very successful. The second phase was improving our children's services. And that would be relatively easy as well. Policymakers have a difficult time fighting for, against children's needs. The funds that we were talking about were relatively small, and it was driven by the medical community. But it was disconnected from the grassroots, and the momentum of community support was broken. The third phase to completely reform how care was delivered to people with type 2 diabetes was overwhelmingly large. The goals went from achievable, well-defined ones to one giant leap. It seemed like we were focusing on the destination and not on how we were going to get there. And the community that had been energized two years previously had all but withered and disappeared. So by 2014, the national advocacy stalled indefinitely at phase three, with no idea if or when phase four, standardizing care for adults with type one diabetes would be addressed. And it had failed to capitalize on the momentum of community support that had been evident from phase one. So as an adult with type one diabetes, I joined the campaign to improve my own care and I was happy to help others improve theirs along the way. But after four years, I was disillusioned, and I wasn't getting any personal benefit from being involved at a national level. Personal benefits are really important in advocacy, and they're really important in feeding your grassroots. Most advocates who get involved are volunteers, and selflessness is just not sustainable long term. So we need to know that our cause is going to improve our own situation or in the services we need. We need to know that giving up our time is going to make a difference. So I went back to what I love most, my community, and meeting lots of other people with diabetes. And I thought to myself, okay, what can I do for me that others will benefit from too? And what followed would was absolutely not intentional, but it went from bringing people with diabetes together into fostering a grassroots community. And the spark for the idea of bringing people with diabetes together on a larger scale rather than in local support groups 
came out of a chat one evening between myself and my husband about, about of all things, the newly appoint, appointed um, airport CEO. My husband at the time traveled an awful lot for work, so he was very interested in who was in charge of our local airport. Turns out that this CEO, CEO had diabetes. And my next immediate thought was, oh my gosh, I wonder if he'd come do a talk with our group. But Mr. Big Ideas next to me, a title he has earned because it's not the first time, said, forget that, organize a big event, invite lots of people, have lots of people as speakers with diabetes. Uh, okay, so together with my friends Christine and Rebecca from Diabetes Support Group, we created the Thrive Abetes Conference. 170 adults from all over Ireland came to our first conference in 2015. A year later, we expanded to include children and exceeded the capacity of our venue of 220 people with a waiting list of 50 more. And since 2015, we've organized five national conferences with an average attendance of 270 people. This has all been organized by passionate, dedicated, unpaid volunteers like me from our community. So founding Thrive Abetus and being the only member of the team who didn't have a full-time job, I was being invited to international ad advocacy scholarship programs. And one really important event that I attended was organized by the Diabetes Hands Foundation in the US. It was called Master Labs. And this conference taught me the power of one advocate. It also uh, taught me that there was a word to describe what I was doing, advocacy. It also taught me that change can happen in small actions or small steps. It taught me of the importance of helping others to develop as advocates too. So with Thrive Abetus bringing people together, those of us who wanted to make a difference were finding each other and we were forming our own grassroots community. And an example of how this is working is a project that I am currently involved with where we are addressing a gap in our regional diabetes service. The gap in our care is um, specialist diabetes patient education. And once we identified that the main barrier to having this program in our local diabetes center was the lack of specialist staff, we created a list of small achievable goals. First, we asked government for the funding for those positions and every funding approvable, approved, every funding that was approved was one, step, one small step forward. Then we asked, when would the staff start? And each commencement date then was another step towards our big goal. Now we're in the situation where all the specialist staff required to run the education program are in place. So we're asking, when will the staff receive the training required to launch the program? So this series of small achievable goals demonstrated to us our progress, but it also served as motivation to spur us on to the next goal. Our small grassroots team is getting things done. So I've been volunteering as a diabetes advocate for 14 years. And I've learned lots of things, but I'm going to leave you with two of them. I've learned that advocacy requires a leadership that empowers your grassroots community. And that your grassroots community needs to be nourished through setting small achievable wins to demonstrate progress, but also to be the motivation to sustain long-term participation. I've learned about the importance of feeding your grassroots. Thank you.